Senator Cruz. Thank you, Jim. The world right now is horrified to be witnessing the most significant military conflict in Europe since 1945, since the end of World War II. Last night, President Biden and the State of the Union rightly denounced Putin's invasion of Ukraine. But nowhere in his remarks did he acknowledge his own responsibility for this invasion. This invasion was preventable. It's the direct result of two catastrophic mistakes from the Biden White House. Number one, last summer, the disastrous withdrawal from Af Afghanistan, the surrender to the Taliban. Every enemy of America looked at Washington and took a measure of the man in the Oval Office. And unfortunately, they concluded that the president was weak and feckless and ineffective. And at the time, I and others said the chances of Russia invading Ukraine just ro ro rose tenfold. The chances of China invading Taiwan just rose tenfold. But secondly, it was very specific mistakes President Biden made towards Ukraine and Russia that caused this invasion. Putin has long wanted to invade Ukraine. He wants to reassemble the Soviet Union. He wants to reassemble the Russian Empire of 1922. He did invade Ukraine in 2014, Crimea, the southern part, but he stopped short of a full invasion. Why? Because his major source of revenue is selling oil and natural gas, and the natural gas goes on pipelines right through the middle of Ukraine. And he couldn't invade without endangering those pipelines and limiting his ability to get Russian gas to Europe. The next year, Putin began Nord Stream 2, an undersea pipeline that goes straight from Russia to Germany and skips Ukraine. The purpose of Nord Stream 2 was to enable Russia to invade Ukraine. In 2019, I authored bipartisan legislation, sanctioned leg legislation, to stop Nord Stream 2. Every senator here supported that legislation. We passed it with overwhelming bipartisan support. President Trump signed that sanctions legislation into law, and Putin stopped building Nord Stream 2 the day the sanctions legislation was signed into law. The pipeline remained a dead, dead letter for over a year. Joe Biden became president on January 20th, 2021, and Putin recommenced deep sea construction of Nord Stream 2 four days later on January 24th because Biden projected weakness and specifically that he would waive the sanctions. Several months later, Biden formally waived the sanctions on Russia, giving Putin the green light to build Nord Stream 2. That is why Russia invaded Ukraine. At the time Biden waived the sanctions, Ukraine and Poland both said the result of this will be a Russian invasion of Ukraine. I and others up here said, if you waive these sanctions, we are gonna see Russian tanks in the streets of Kiev. Tragically, we're on the verge of that right now. Final point. Joe Biden and his administration don't want to win this war. You didn't hear a word last night about victory. Biden is resigned to Putin winning, to Russia conquering Ukraine, to the Soviet Union taking a major step towards being reassembled. His entire administration, both publicly and privately, holds out no hope for victory, I'm going to suggest the approach on this invasion. It is borrowed from Ronald Reagan when he was asked, what's your approach on the Cold War? He said, very simple, we win, they lose. We should do three specific things to win. Number one, we should pass legislation making Nord Stream 2 sanctions permanent and not waivable by Joe Biden. Number two, we should pass overwhelming sanctions on the Russian economy using our economic might. Jim Risch's NIET Act is a major step forward and it is Democrats that are protecting the Russian economy right now by stopping those sanctions. The Biden sanctions inexplicably exclude energy. Putin's major source of revenue is selling oil and gas and Biden's given an exception. You can continue getting billions of dollars to fund the invasion of Ukraine. We ought to shut down all Russian oil and gas sales in the United States, and we ought to lead a worldwide boycott of Russian oil and gas. Yesterday, I talked with the former CEO of the largest natural gas company in Ukraine who was in my office. He described, if you want to stop Putin, 
The only way to do it is hit it where it hurts, which is his oil and gas revenues. He believes Europe can't give them up. There are enough reserves. There's enough production worldwide to fill that gap with American leadership. And that's the one thing that can weaken Putin and cause this invasion to fail. And finally, third, we need to be providing far more lethal military assistance to Ukraine. Nobody wants to see, and we should not see, American troops engaged in combat with Russian troops. But we should be providing weapons like javelins and stingers in far greater quantities to the Ukrainians who are heroically fighting to defend their homeland. That's how we win. But Joe Biden doesn't want to win, doesn't believe we can win. He believes weakness and appeasement is the path forward. It's how we got here. And if we continue with weakness and appeasement, it will result in a Russian victory. And that is terrible for Ukraine, terrible for Europe, terrible for America, and terrible for the world. We can win if we rediscover American strength and resolve. Thanks, Ted.